Jordan, are we on? Good afternoon. I'd like to welcome you all to Tiger Lake State Park. Um, this is a, a park that's near and dear to me. My grandfather he passed away almost 20 years ago, but he worked for the WPA and helped build the dam. So I grew up here as a, as a young child. And um, I was really tickled when I got a call from the guy standing beside me four years ago and said, hey, uh, I'd like to interview you for the job of director of the DNR. And when I went to his office, First thing he said is, we're going to bring tourism back in West Virginia. And we're going to use our state parks to do it. And I want you to get with the folks at Tourism, Chelsea Ruby, and I want you to do whatever it takes to, 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 to bring our parks back to where they need to be. And what's wonderful about that is the man has kept his word for four years. And we're here today to talk about some wonderful renovations that we're doing to Tigert Lake. But with his direction and with his support, we've invested over $100 million in West Virginia state parks and it's paying dividends, absolutely. We are, we're breaking attendance records literally every weekend. It's just, it's just amazing what we've been able to do, but the governor came here today to tell you a little bit about what we have done and talk about what we're going to be doing as, as part of, of, of the ongoing process. So with that, it's my wonderful, distinct pleasure to introduce to you the governor of the great state of West Virginia, Jim Justice. Well, before we go any further, Amy, come up here and talk to us just a second. You know, I know this, this young lady is right from this area, and she does great work, and I'll just pass to her. Okay. Thank you, Governor. It's a pleasure to be here, and we are able to show one of our shining stars here today to you, and with your help, we've been able to improve it and make it better. And Director McDaniel has a vision for this park that like no other. And I'm just so glad to be able to work with them, share what we want, and they see it and they want it too. So good things for the state of West Virginia and good things for Taylor County. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, let me, let me just say this. <clears throat> you know, I've said it a bunch, a bunch of times, and I know you probably get tired of hearing me say this, but I said, I've said, you know, any frog that's not proud of his own pond isn't much of a frog. And if you look out there, how beautiful, how beautiful beyond belief, and you'll look at the mountains around, and you'll just think, just for a second, what an opportunity that we have in West Virginia. What an opportunity that we have with the great people, all the great people that work here, all the absolute greatness that West Virginia has, and all we've got to do is tell our story. That's all there is to it. Invest some dollars and tell our story. And so we've done that. You know, our great director and Steve has done an amazing job with leadership like Amy Summers and all the different, all the different components that make it all to go together. Before you know it, you spin around just a few times, invest some real dollars, do something from like what, what's been done here and the director just reported to me from the boat dock to the road to the renovations to the lodge to all the different stuff you're doing. And lo and behold, you know what his biggest problem is right now? He doesn't have a parking lot big enough to, to hold the people. He's got to build another parking lot. You know, well, for crying out loud, isn't that a wonderful problem to have? You know, always, you know, when you think about it, you, you know, when you got a problem that you're selling so much that you just got to get a bigger truck, it's a wonderful, wonderful problem to have in life. And so, so I can't say enough, tourism is exploding, but it's exploding because the people on the outside are really beginning to see that you're the diamond in the rough that they missed. Now, I got to take this off just one second. Now, just think about this, just, please. <clears throat> you know, we all know we're dealing with COVID, and I want to encourage you to wear your mask and protect one another in every way. And I wouldn't have this off, but I'm a good ways away from you. But <clears throat> I would tell you that it's serious stuff. You saw that it even invaded the White House the probably one of the most sacred protected places on the planet 
it can touch each and every one of us, and it can get us tomorrow. You got to be careful, and you got to watch what you're doing. You got to protect yourself and protect your neighbors and protect us all. But in, in all that, I would just tell you just this. You may think that the reason that we're booming today is because of COVID. Some of that's true. But we were booming before we ever had COVID on the radar screen. We were starting the movement like crazy then because people began to see just how precious and how unique and how absolutely beautiful this place truly is. So for those of you that are here, God bless you for all the great work you're doing. Keep on doing that work. I could never be more proud. I mean, really, at the end of the day, I say it over and over and over, but you see, I don't want anything. I never have wanted anything, except I do want just one thing. I want the world to truly see how good we really are. And they're seeing it every day. And they're seeing it because of all the great work you're doing. So God bless each and every one of you. Thank you for having me. And keep on keeping on. We're going to absolutely continue to knock it out of the park. And so I'm, I'm really proud to be here in every way. So thank you so much. Thank you, Governor. So what we're going to talk about today is that we basically have a, a three-phase project, and we're starting on phase three. As I mentioned earlier, and as the governor alluded to, when we first got here, we had to do something with, with the marina facilities. We didn't have enough parking. We didn't, our boat ramps were in disarray. So the West Virginia Division of Natural Resources, we made a $2.3 million investment in the, in the marina and the, the boat ramps and the parking facilities. And our good friends at the Department of Highways spent several hundred thousand dollars and came in and repaved all the roads, Governor. We had potholes and it was just wonderful now coming into the park. Then in phase two, we started out at the campgrounds and the cabins. We remodeled all the cabins. We upgraded the campground facilities. One of the things when I came here, we weren't renting the cabins at the lake. And we couldn't figure out why. Well, we had no air conditioning. We had no television. We had no internet. And our, our cabins were, out, were outdated. So we invested $750,000 into upgrading all those. We added boat docks out there. So now if someone from out of state wants to bring their boat down and spend a week with their family, they have their own dock on the other side of the lake right by the cabins where you can walk over the hill. Our cabins were, the superintendents back there can tell you, our cabins were full all summer long. You got to wait a year to get them now. Well, now we got to go to work on the lodge and the wastewater treatment facility. So it's phase three. We're going to re do, remodel all the lodges. We're going, to, we're going to upgrade the inside of the dining room area, and we need a new wastewater treatment plant. So we're going to be spending about $2.5 million on lodge renovations and the wastewater treatment plants. And when we're finished, we will have made an investment of over $6 million dollars Tiger Lake State Park, and 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 as the governor, I, I I've got to ask him for more money now because as I told him, the biggest problem we have now is we can't park everybody when they come here on the weekend. I mean, literally, it's nothing to see five, six hundred boats on this on this lake during the, during the week. And next year, we have we have announced we have a public-private partnership. We are entering into well, over at the beach. We are going to be building an adventure park. And there's a private investor that's going to invest a quarter of a million dollars and to create the big bouncy park. And that will also draw hundreds of people to the park. So there's wonderful things happening all over the state of West Virginia because of this man sitting right beside me. And we've got a lot more to do, and we've got four more years to do it. So I wanted to thank the governor, and I wanted to thank you all for coming out today. Well, I, I, four more years is a long time, isn't it? But, uh, but we've got a lot done, and we're going to keep on getting it done. And, uh, and I, I, I just can't say enough, you know, of how proud I am. Y you know, it, to go to us as a legislature, to come to the governor, to go to us and ask for more dollars because we have more business. You know, for every dollar we spend on tourism, the multiplier effect is, ranges from probably from 14 to 18 times that dollar you get back almost instantly. Well, for crying out loud, I mean, you'd, you'd be a complete dodo brain to not just keep spending and pouring more and more into tourism because we are only scratching the surface as what we can do. 
Now let, let me just say one other thing because it's just this: is would you would you who would believe that if if I were to say to you in the state of West Virginia, our income from severance taxes is the lowest that it's been in the last 25 years, and I think I'm really really close on on that. Then I would say to you, how do you think the state's doing? Your response would have absolutely always been, well, good God, we're destitute. We're going under. That's we have to be. If our severance tax are the lowest that it's been in the last 25 years, we got to be in real trouble. And just the opposite is true. And the reason that it's true is because we have diversified. We are moving towards an economy that is based on tourism and high tech and higher ed and manufacturing and, and sure, mining and gas and all that, sure. But for crying out loud, we've got a lot going on in West Virginia. It's good stuff. And so I absolutely salute you in every way. And I just say we just got to keep on keeping on because we've got a lot, lot more good announcements that are right around the horizon. Thank you again for having me.